Wrapping gifts with fabric is both beautiful and sustainable. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use scraps or fabric from your stash to make a patchwork log cabin style wrapping cloth. Welcome to Evita Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So a pojagi is a traditional Korean wrapping cloth. And wrapping cloths have been used in Korean culture for thousands of years. And they were fabric that was used to wrap things, either to carry them, to give as gifts, to store them. There was a lot of different uses that they had. And um, historically, some were made out of silk, they were made out of different fabrics, some were embroidered or painted or stamped. So there's a big variety. And these are similar to furoshiki, which is Japanese wrapping cloth. But the one distinction, as far as I've been able to tell, is that I don't think furoshiki were ever patchwork. If you have different information about that, I would love to hear it, but I haven't discovered that in my research that I've done. But pojagi were made out of patchwork. People would use their scraps and pieces that they saved and put them together to make a wrapping cloth. And so that's the project I'm gonna show you today. It's a wrapping cloth used with fabric that you already have, and we're gonna make this in a log cabin style pattern. So what I'm sharing today is not a specific pattern, but just an idea and some general guidelines to get you started. So I'm gonna step you through one project, but be sure to stay till the end so that you can see some other projects that I've done following the same guidelines and they look totally different. So for this project, you can use um, fabric from your stash, either large pieces, you can use scraps, you can use whatever you have on hand. So I am using a couple larger pieces of um, just yardage that I had in my stash. And you're gonna start with a square in the middle, just like with a log cabin block. Now I have an 18 inch square because I'm gonna be making quite a large projagi here. Um, so this will give me a really good uh, foundation to be able to build on. And then I just have these two um, colors of fabric. So I'm using this fabric and this fabric, which you can see are from the same collection. And I am using six inch strips. So I cut six inch strips. And the reason why I cut six inch strips, to be honest, is that's how wide my ruler is. So that was an easy thing. I just cut that strips. So you will need a center square and then you will just need strips to go around the square in bars. So you can have your square whatever size you want. You can have your strips whatever size you want. Um, it, you can use just what you have on hand and your strips don't even all have to be the same width. You can have variety there with whatever you have. So to start off, I'm gonna just start with my um, 18 inch square and then one of my strips, I cut it just a little bit more than 18 inches long because I'm gonna join these two together and I'd wanna be able to trim off this bar after I sew it on. I don't wanna try and have it exactly 18 inches because then if I have to trim, I might have to trim the whole 18 inch square. So I'm just giving myself a bit of leeway here. And then I'm gonna join this onto one of the sides of my square using the uh, simple Pujagi seam method. So if you wanna see the whole tutorial in detail for how I do the seam. You can check that tutorial or I have a link below for it. But this is a reversible patchwork seam. So the seam is finished on both sides so that my piece, even though it is patchwork, it is still only one layer of fabric. So I'm not making a quilt and it doesn't have a lining or a backing. It's still only one layer of fabric, so it will be easy to use and easy to reuse year over year. So I'm gonna start with stitching this seam. So now that that's stitched, 
I'm going to press it over and then press it open. So I just press the wider seam allowance over the narrow seam allowance. And then once that's pressed, I'm just going to open it up this way and press the other side. And you can tell everything's pressed correctly because I don't see the raw edges. If it looked like this, that wouldn't be correct because I could see the raw edges there. So I'm just going to give that an extra little um, touch to hold it down. And now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew right along the edge of this little flap to hold it securely. So here's my finished seam and you can tell already it's totally reversible and the seam is finished on both sides. So it's not going to need a lining or a backing. All the seams are just going to be stitched this way with this seam technique. Now in terms of thread color, that is a personal choice. Uh, because of the way the seams are done, no matter which color thread you use, it's gonna stand out on some of your fabrics more than others. So for this piece, I'm using like a dark gray thread, so it does stand out on this lighter fabric and it kind of blends with the darker fabric. Um, however, I am okay with that, even though my stitching isn't perfect, my stitching lines aren't totally straight, I just embrace that as part of this technique. So it's not precision sewing and precision piecing. This is just a quick, uh, fun, low stress project. So that seam is done. So now I'm gonna just trim the edges. So I'm gonna take my ruler on the cutting mat and I'm just lining up the ruler with the edge of the big piece. And then I'm just gonna trim this to match and I will do that on both sides. So this one I'll turn around so that it's a better angle for me and then I will line up the ruler here with the edge of the fabric and then trim that. So here we can see what that looks like. I have the square with this bar on the side so now I'm just going to add another bar onto this side. So I'm going to go uh, back to my strips that I've cut, cut a piece that is slightly longer than this, and then I will add that on in the same way. Now I have this piece put on. I'm going to move on to the next side. And for this side, I'm going to cut a piece with this dark fabric that matches the center. Um, mine is going to match because I'm only using two fabrics, but you could easily use three fabrics to have a contrasting center and then your different color bars going around it. So I'm going to continue moving around the square, adding bars in the same way, just like with a log cabin block. I'll put one on this side, then I'll come around and put one on this side. Now, because I'm doing a pretty large project, eventually, I'm going to get to a side where I don't have a strip that is long enough. Um, some of my strips that I have are shorter than the full width of fabric. So if my strips aren't long enough, then I can just join these using that same seam. I will just join them together to make a long strip. And then I can continue and keep going until my square is whatever size I want it to be. So I'm probably going to only add uh, maybe two rounds around this. I'll do two rounds and then see how big it is and if I want to add a third round or if two is going to be enough. So here I've added two rounds all the way around the center square and it's about 39 inches square. So by the time I hem it, it'll be 38-ish. Um, and I think that is a good enough size. So I'm gonna leave it like this. So it's only the two rounds. So to finish it, I'm just gonna do a simple hem. So you fold over about a quarter of an inch and press. 
then another quarter inch of press, and then stitch right along there. So you just hem each side one at a time, and then it's gonna be finished. So the edge is hemmed, and now it's ready to be used. And so there are a lot of different ways you, you can tie Pajagi depending on the size and shape of what you are carrying. But here's just a simple way. If you have just a regular box, you put the box in the middle and then bring up the two corners so it's centered and then tie a little knot. And then you bring up the opposite two corners and then tie a knot just the same way. And then if you need to um, adjust the fold, you can easily adjust that. But there, what a nice way to wrap a gift. And this gift wrap can be used over and over again. You can wash and dry it if you need to, uh, but it's just a really beautiful way to wrap a gift. So I do have a couple of other uh, wrapping cloths that I made with this same technique. Now this one, is about 41 inches square so it's pretty large and this one I also used um, just yardage so it's long strips so the there are no uh, pieced strips in here because the longest one was about 42 inches which was the whole um, width of fabric but you can see I had this purple square in the middle that's around 12 inches square and then I used six inch strips again so it's three rounds around the center square and so this one is fun with all the bright colors. And this one is made with solid fabric, so there's no right and wrong side to worry about. It is totally reversible. Then this one is made with scraps, and these are actually pieces that I found that had been cut out to make face masks with. And since I'm hoping to never make another face mask again in my life, I decided to go ahead and use these. So I had a center square that I started and This one was, I think, 15 inches square. And then I just put these rectangles, the pieces that I had, and I sewed those into strips. So you can see that those strips are all made with smaller rectangles. And so this one has this um, pattern fabric in the middle and then it has green going on one corner and red going on the other corner. And so this one is pretty big, so you can use it to wrap pretty large packages, but you can also make these smaller. This one is a totally scrappy one and it's about 25 inches square. And with this one, I was given a bunch of these strips. I don't know what they were for, but they were all around four inches by eight inches and they were from all different kinds of fabric. So I took these and I started with a four inch square in the middle and then just kept going around. So you can see it has a lot of different fabrics. It's kind of difficult even to see the log cabin design, but it was made just the same way. Center, square, and then I worked out around the square, but um, the bars that I had in my log cabin were pieced together. Now this one does have a number of fabrics that do have a clear right and wrong side. So if you have that, just when you're aligning your fabrics, you put them right sides together or wrong sides together, and then it will all uh, work out. We can see that this little strip here, I actually did put that in the wrong way. Um, the right side is on the other side of the piece, but I don't think that's that big of an issue. I'm certainly not going to rip any seams to take that out. But this one, if we want to put a smaller gift in there, um, we could wrap it in just the same way. So we'll wrap it across. And then wrap the other corners. So this is also a really fun way to wrap a gift 
with so many different fabrics. So you can see, you can really play with the scraps that you have. You can do it with big pieces of fabric or you can do it as scrappy as you want. But whatever you do, um, have fun playing with this project and making your own log cabin projagi. I would love to see a picture of what you make. So you can either tag me on social media or send me a picture and I'm always happy to see those. If you want to see more ideas for projects that use this reversible patchwork technique, I have a free ebook. It's called Rethink Your Scraps, Five Scrappy Patchwork Projects That Are Not Quilts. You can see this project and get some other inspiration there. So you can click the link below to get that. And for more Pojani and quilting tutorials and inspiration, you can check out my website, evadastudio.com.